normally stay there when you have exam. You normally stay in Lake Epe or around an Atlantic. I think Morales Morales network is is quite is trying needs anointing oil. <laughs> So how are you guys doing all over the world? As you join us, tell us you're in your city. Say, so where in New Jersey are you? I'm back in Manhattan. I just went to inspect a property in New Jersey. Um, this is my mentee. He just got his house using my formula. You know, he's, he's rented out the two, first two floors, used the money to pay his mortgage, just like I taught him. And he could not wait for me to say it and say, Kochi, I've done what you taught me. All right. Um, so he's here with me, he's the one driving. How are you doing? <laughs> it's a good student. Me, yeah, I like good students. And I mentor people well. And you and you practice what we, we teach you because I I I teach that. The house you live in is not an asset, but a liability. So he his own cost him, and, and the story is just sweet because it cost him five forty thousand to get his house in, in New Jersey. And understanding that he needs to monetize it, because I've always said, except you rent out your house, it's a liability, it's not an asset, even though it's your house. So he's practiced what I told him to do. It's a five bedroom. He lives on the ground floor, turn it to two bedroom for himself and his wife. Then the second floor, he rented it out. The third floor, he rented it out. He's making $4,000. And the $4,000 covered mortgage tax, everything. So technically, he is living on a free house. Get the juicier part. Okay. And you got the house last year, December, January this year. Between in six months, the property has appreciated. Now he's gotten fifty thousand equity, right? So hopefully it grows to hundred thousand. Then he buys the second house. Then he buys the third house. Okay, listen. The easiest place to build wealth in real estate is those of you in diaspora. You just need to understand the secret, right? Just need to know how this thing works. So I'm happy for him. I went there to pray and dedicate the house. It's a happy man. Uh, <laughs> you're back. Can you hear me now? Hello, Mariah. Can you hear me now? Ah, your network today. Oh, Lord, help Mariah's network. We need to put anointing oil on your network. Okay. No, it's actually third Milan Bridge. Oh. Yeah, and that's you are quite close already. You're close to uh, the network is supposed to be quite better. But I'm sure once you leave Third Milan Bridge, should be a lot better. Should be a lot better. Maybe it's because she's on Todd Milan Bridge. Um, yeah, some of you are saying, Help me, help me. Well, it's uh, you need to buy the Billionaire Habit book, it, it teaches all of that. Or you can, if you are in New York or New Jersey, on Island, you can join me today. It's 5 p.m. Uh, for the book signing. I'm going to sign your book for you. We take pictures. And you can learn a little bit more on how to build legitimate wealth and real estate anywhere in the world. I'm just all out, right, to empowering our people. It hurts me that Africans in the diaspora are the most educated. Yeah. <laughs> Mariah is with our own copy. Can you see? You are Africans in diaspora are the most educated. Yeah, they are not among the richest. I am. It's my companion. Yes, I can it's see. In my car. Yeah, I can see. I know you started reading it. You know, I think it's it's better now. Your your network seems to be better now. 
So let's get straight to it. Ladies and gentlemen, today we will look at how Moraya was fired. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So All many right, of so... you have been uh, angry that other people were fired. <laughs> Moraya didn't fight for them. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, here yeah, I won't fire it too. Okay, because like you know, guys, <laughs> you know, so that title actually yeah. touched everybody. So, uh, uh, right. before what what was the issue surrounding this issue of you being fired? What were the issues surrounding it? Okay, before I go into that issue, it's important that I set the premise correctly, yeah, so that we are all on the same page. Because the truth is that every company, as I said the last time have phases. There's a phase in the company where um, there there are things that are not properly structured. You know, things are done haphazardly. We've all seen it. Um, Today, I am grateful that my company, which I love with all my heart, is more structured, have a lot of um, upwardly thinking people running things, and have a whole team, even older and new, who are doing things much better. But back then, there were times where things would just happen, and I wonder, ah, What's going on? What's going on? Because things weren't properly structured in the in the, in the early days. So um, this particular incident happened. It was a very very interesting day. And the reason why I want this story to feature in my book because it was a huge um, imp- it has a huge imprint on my life on uh, on how urgent I knew my assignment was mm-hmm. and how I needed to take my job seriously mm-hmm. and how I, then because it was, it, it was the reality that, listen, you are taking advantage. People are, you know, people are, people will want to have what you have. Yeah. It's important for me to use that experience that are taking me at the time. So I woke up to the work that day and, um, and I got a call from, um, I think was he HR or somebody that said that listen, no, I was told to appear at a I would like to just I would like to for the sake of this book, I like to call it head office. Yeah. You know, just for just for the sake of this book, I'll call it head office. Yeah. That you're being called at the head office to appear. So I went to the place. It wasn't I wasn't the only person, a few of other people in my in my in my in the senior manager were also called. And then I got there. I was apprehensive. Now, before this, maybe I should I even start from the beginning? Mm. Okay. Anyway, let me tell you what happened first. Then, how what, what how I interpreted the whole thing. So yeah. I start with what happened, and then my interpretation of the whole thing. Yeah. So that day, I got to the head office, and I was told that a lady wanted to see me, and I went there, and then she served me a letter. I opened it in her. She asked me to open it in her presence, so I know what it is. So I opened it, and I saw that I had been relieved of my duties. Now, this is um, this was 2015. Your view was two years old mm. then. Mm. And we were just gradually, you know, gaining, you know, uh, yeah. prominence yeah. gradually, you know. The show, a lot of people didn't know, didn't know the show at the time, but we were, we, we were, I mean, some people knew us, you know. Yeah. And um, it was 2015. It was February 2015. Okay. And... So when she served me that letter and I saw it that my, my job was being terminated, mm-hmm. I looked at her and said, listen, I'm not saying that I would not accept this letter. Mm-hmm. But the truth is, I have done this, this. I mean, I listed out all my achievements, yeah. what I have done, how I turned things around, the people I brought in, the rebranding that was done for the company. The, you know, I, I, I took out time to list out every single thing that I've done. And I told her, I don't deserve to be fired because I have actually worked. And here, and this is how I have taken this channel from this position to this position. And I even recently got promoted because of it. Yeah. Recently, I got promoted. So I was saying that I'm surprised. I recently got promoted because of because of the work I had done on this channel. In fact, for the very first time, we made number one. You know, So because she heard me out, she had compassion. So she knew that, hmm, maybe this girl is not supposed to be. She now said, you know what, Mariah? Uh, everything you just said now, go and put it in writing. Send it to me, and I'll see what I can do to get you reinstated, you know? So 
um, I left. Now, because obviously I was also very, very nervous, scared, you know, you already heard other directors in my own level too, um, all sorts of things. Everybody was worried for me. I got back, I got back to the office and instead of me to shut my mouth, because Duman told me specifically, this thing that happened though, keeps again, immaturity as a staff. Um, you know, that was the immaturity as a staff. It's probably, you know, as a human being, you're scared, you know, you're confused. You know, you, as an average Nigerian, you thrive on emotional breakdown. You want everybody to be, hey, come and see you, see what happened to me, or come and see you, you know? So, of course, I got to the office and I told one person, I told the second person, before you know it, the whole section. It's not viral. I knew what happened. <laughs> oh my goodness, it went viral. <laughs> Something I was supposed to keep on a hush hush. Wow. It went viral, the whole office knew, and you know. And then at that time, I had a very strong team. Yeah. I had a strong team of people who, who really supported me because I mean, I brought my team from high TV. A lot of them, all of my key guys, my my key reports, people I run info. <laughs>